how the how the um, the sequence of events was. I because I was following uh, Spec put Spec put up a post. Oh, Spec put up a post yesterday afternoon, and I was following the comments on the post and gathering information from what people were posting, and then he took it down. So I reached out to him only for the purpose to ask him why he took right, it down. Right, right. And then he told me he took it down because you asked him to take it down. And I was just, I'm sorry. I was oh, no, you're good. Be, I was trying to I don't, respectful. I don't remember anybody asking to take it down, but it's fine because it, it's, it's probably been back up since then. And ever since yeah, then, But I was so, trying to be respectful. No, I, I definitely get that. I of, definitely get that. I definitely of, get that. Of, of how vulnerable right, you guys right. are. No, and I, I believe you are vulnerable. Yeah. I definitely, I definitely can understand where you're coming from. Like that's definitely understandable. I'm so sorry. No, that is that's definitely understandable, and I appreciate the empathizing and the sympathy for the situation we did go through because yes, that was very traumatic. It showed us how far we still have to go. If no homies didn't teach us anything, going out there taught us how so far away from ending racism in this state we are. And what my main question that's been burning a hole in my brain since that incident is how is it that we're allowing the city of Seattle to have a police chief that doesn't even live here and lives in a racist place like that and then puts out a statement basically condoning what, what her racist did. what her racist neighbors did. Yeah. Pulling guns on us. So you're basically Mind saying you. it's okay for them to confront peaceful yeah. protesters with violence and intimidation. No, and then paint them as the I bad first, guys. When I first read the chief's letter, um, the thing I focused on was her characterization of you, that she characterized you as aggressive and intending to <laughs> trespass and break mm -hmm. the law. Mm -hmm. And then um, also said we were wearing things that we weren't wearing. Like, all black. Yeah. I was and, 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 and said it was late at night. Oh, and yeah. said it was late at night. It was like 6 o'clock at night, no, literally. No, no, you're fine. But then um, I asked other I shared the letter with other people um, in my family who I trust, and the thing that I was um, sort of reoriented uh, to be really upset and hurt about is the fact that the chief characterized her neighbor's actions as successful. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Too. And I, I, I'm, I, like I they saved the day or something like that. Like they're heroes. Yeah. By heroes. Some and and so I wrote a statement last night, and I didn't say it this morning because I then I <laughs> shared my statement with other trusted advisors who told me that I was not properly appreciating the fact that the chief is a black woman who has her she own experiences. But I feel like the chief took the view of her neighbors. Mm -hmm. Like, like, it wasn't her fear of you that she was experiencing. It was her neighbor's fear of you. And I just, I don't understand that. That's what I'm saying. It's, and I, I don't want that. I don't. And this is just a, this is, we're all in a really difficult place. And I want to, I want to help bridge, I want to help bridge these big gaps that we're experiencing. Um, you know. Reverend Harriet Walden, you know, did you read her tweets last night? Like, yeah. she doesn't know who you are. And this is the predominant African American elder who has been, she's, she's Omari's mom and Chikundi's mom. And she has, she, she has been promoting police accountability for 30 years in this city. She's been holding our feet to the fire. And there's just such a big gulf here. And I just, I mean, we cannot be afraid of each other. Like, my whole 27 years of living, I've never... If that showed me anything, it showed me that Seattle is soft as hell compared to out there. Like, Seattle has so many closet races that hide behind so many different things, and out there so blatant and just so on it. display, they're and they're just happy about that. And so, as a black person in this city, to have a, a police chief that's black who got in that office because the black community fought for her. So for her to live there and condone that, that is terrifying. It broke my heart. That, it's terrifying. That's just terrifying. Because now I gotta be in fear of everybody now. Now I have to walk down the street and look like, damn, is this person gonna come out the closet as a racist on me now too? Because it's so blatant out there and it's being condoned. 
by somebody that is supposed to protect and serve us, literally. And it's being condoned by that person. So what are you guys gonna do about that? Like, seriously. At the end of the day, something that the council members can't do about that and something that the council members can't say about what the chief put out in that letter is that we visited your house, haven't we, Lisa? Have we ever pointed guns at your face? Have we ever stepped on your property and tried to destroy your property or done bully anything you? like that or have we bullied, bullied you? you over and over? So, so if you're aware of what we do, the work that we do, and you so see it, then that's something that you can What speak is on. being told to me, and I can't, I don't have this experience. I'm a white woman, okay? And you've talked to, you've talked to, you've talked to Councilmember Morales and you've talked to Councilmember Mosqueda and you've talked to Councilmember uh, Gonzalez. We don't have a black person on the city council. Um, but what I'm being told is, um, as it relates specifically to Councilmember um, Juarez and, and the chief, is that um, this movement is not appreciating their trauma. And, and I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just talking real to you. I, 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 like I told you last time you came, I, you know, again, I'm a white lady, but when I was an activist, I took tenants to protest their landlords at their homes. When I was a community activist, I took, I took black folks and low income people to the homes of the, of the directors of the Federal Reserve in Washington, D.C. I don't think there's anything wrong with protesting people in power at their homes, but there's something that I don't understand and if you are a person who is a person in power who has generational and lived experiences of trauma, I, you know, I just, I'm just asking us all to have grace and, and, and appreciate that. And I'm not trying to say, I, I don't think, I, I'm, I'm very, again, I'm heartbroken by the chief's letter because she, I, I feel like, um, I mean, I don't know if she was home, I don't know how close you got to her home. We didn't even get, no, we didn't even get off <laughs> the street. We didn't it, get off the main It didn't house. look like it. And, it. and it feels to me like she was, um, her neighbors were afraid. And she took that and made that her own fear of you. <laughs> but I'm a white lady. And I can't, I don't have her experiences. Are you afraid of us? No. Exactly. Are we bullying you right now? Are, so are we intimidating you right now? Well, make they, so don't think that, they don't think you're, you don't, they don't think you're a, a, for some reason, I don't know why. Okay, I'm but trying to understand. But they don't think you're a black, on, they don't think you're black lead. I don't understand that. They think because that. Because they don't know us. They don't know. care to know, know us. They don't care to reach out to us or anything like that. They don't care to do that. And that is the reason why we have showed up at council members' houses. That so is that the way we, yes. that we have gotten your attention. Yes. And I thank you, Lisa, for being the first council member who yes, actually exited their house yes. and came out here they to talk to tone. us like human beings. Because after that, the rest of them did the same. And now they've been bringing us to the table. We've been having conversations mm -hmm. with them. And all of that has only happened because we've marched to their houses mm -hmm. and because they have come out of their houses. Right. And I just want to make it so clear that our intentions of Saturday night is exactly this. This right here. Right literally. here. The same way we march through streets yeah. from over here, we play music, we chant, and then we come out here. We hope that somebody is going to come out of their house and talk to us so we can have a conversation just like this. Those were our full intents. Instead of that, the chief is painting it as if we were coming in to terrorize the town. We were coming in to destroy property and attack the neighbors when in reality, those were the neighbors' intentions. Yep. How were we walking and driving yep. peacefully and we're met with rifles in our faces yep. and we're painted as the aggressors? Yep. That makes absolutely no sense. So like I said before, something that the council members can do in response to that letter is let the chief know you know who we are you've seen what we do and that was never on our agenda and it never will be and that we are definitely black led for sure period i i wrote a statement last night i'm going to rewrite it and um i'm going to try to acknowledge um her her um the manifestation of you know her feelings as a black woman but I'm gonna tell her who you are because there's just no reason for this there's just there's no reason for us to be Is afraid of husband? each other there's, you should come out and okay I was just making sure it's somebody <laughs> yeah, that, that you is, know you going up okay. here to your yeah, house I was like um we don't do that <laughs> okay go ahead I and and I just I, you know I'm so frustrated by the fact that you know some of my trusted advisors 
are asking me to care more about her fear um, about you protesting her house than I care about you. Mm -hmm. Then I care about you Can I ask being something? met with trucks and guns. And also the chief laughing after tear gassing the city. We're on a we're, we're I mean, on a, we I are care on a different about you guys. Job. And that is unacceptable that you're walking down a rural road in a public right of way and the streets are blocked with pickup trucks and you're met with people with guns. That, that is completely unacceptable. I want to add something. I just like want to let you know, and I feel like other black people can vouch for this too. Letting another black person know about another black person isn't anti-black. So you telling them- That I'm a white lady. No, <laughs> no it doesn't matter. That's sticking up for that's proving black lives matter. It doesn't matter. That's you proving black lives matter. It does, matter. Matter. Black it does matter. not matter. Tell that's me. not being anti-black. Simply saying, this is a black-led group that I've seen and sat down with and know that they do not do such and such because obviously she doesn't know who we are. So you educating her on who we are is that. not anti-black. That. That's not, not. We fully like, support you educating on her, her on who we are. I can do that. Okay. I will. We can't. We can't. We don't have that position to have those contacts and be able to get our message across. We were just automatically met with rifles, literally. So that doesn't give us the chance to even do anything whatsoever. Um, we did absolutely nothing to be met with that kind of aggression. And it's already so crazy. It's already crazy what we went through that night and the way that we were approached. But it's even crazier that when these stories are coming out into the media, we are the bad guys. We are the ones who are going to hurt people. We are the, and it was the complete well, we showed up opposite. In we showed up in cotton. The complete opposite. And got opposite. met with bulletproof vests and AR-15. Someone's shaking a mag at us. Tell me, tell me. I Somebody wanna, really I hear drove by sh yeah, shaking the well, well, Okay, so we already, um, we actually had a um, an interview with King 5 News today. It's going to air at 9.30 p.m., 10.30 and 11, so that story's been already out courage. there. I'm so, sorry, I know how hard this is for you guys to, to, to tell is. these stories. But we have to. And you're truth. so vulnerable, but you've got so, thank you for your courage. Yeah. So pretty much what happened is, um, we'll walk through, through it quickly, so our plan, uh, we met up at our meeting spot, we go up to Snohomish with our cars and our protesters. Mm -hmm. uh, we pull up on we pull up on the road that we were going to protest on, and once we arrive at this road, there was already neighbors coming out, questioning what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, there was a white female in an Escalade who was questioning and came out of, I believe, something that was her home. Mm -hmm. It was an area that her home was at. She went and she blocked the road that was leading to Chief Best's house and got on the phone with somebody. Mm -hmm. Shortly after that, this blue truck with a white male and his two white teenage sons pulled up to us and started to ask questions. What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? Just over and over again. We're saying, well, we're here to protest for Black Lives Matter. We're here to do this and that. And that's why we're here. And I could just tell while speaking to this man or while the other person was speaking to this man that he was not on our side whatsoever. But whether you're on our side or not, we are here to get a message across and that's what we're here for and we're going to do it, period. So once we realized that neighbors are coming out of the area and we were parked on the sides of houses just the same way this car is parked right here, mm -hmm. we were parked on the public streets, but we decided to leave those areas and go park somewhere else just so we could feel safer for ourselves. Once we get to this gravel um, spot for our cars to get in, we there was cars coming in and out, people rolling down their windows, staring at us, scoping us out, and just like talking about us, and you could just tell they do not want us here. Mm -hmm. So from that point, we go on to get to the road that leads to Chief Best's house, which is a dead end at that point. Mm -hmm. There's only one way in and one way out. Mm -hmm. As we're driving down this road, same blue truck with that same man. Mm -hmm. This time his car is right in front of, actually his truck was pretty much, so this is his house, let's say, and his truck was parked right here, blocking this entire, the entire road. Mm -hmm. It's a very short road. He's not even on his property. Mm -hmm. So we're going up there. People had already walked up there to see what was going on and they were met with rifles in their faces and pistols and You're just all kinds of weapons. Are we have, kidding me? No. We have video. I mean, I knew, we they, had, had, I knew that they had guns. Let me show you. But well, we have they video. pointed it at our protesters' faces. We were not on anyone's property. Yeah. We were on public roads. They had their roads. guns out. Yes. Yeah. We have a video. They were yeah. waving yeah. them at us and trying to Look. intimidate us. We have a video of it. They had guns in our faces. 
So as we approach this vehicle, I'll finish up here, you see that? As we approach this blue truck, I noticed that it's the same man that I was speaking to earlier, and I was like, oh, I knew it. I just knew that this guy was gonna bring us some problems about something. We're like, can you move your car, please? We're trying to have our protest continue. It's like, no, um, I don't want all these cars, these like 200 cars in my road and like stopping cars. traffic. Yeah. At this point, there was only like five, five cars, cars on the road. There, the rest of our group was still in the gravel area. We were just checking out what was going on. Mm -hmm. And he continuously refused. He continuously had pretty much bullshit reasons for why yep. he won't move his car. So we're talking to these people and we're like, First of all, this man, his wife is now here, and they have their two kids. They sent their kids to go scope us out and let them know where we're going to be. So it's just so unfortunate that you're also roping children roping into this, children into and it. you're helping them think that you are doing the right thing right. here. And, and creating an enemy. Exactly, exactly. And so we continue to let them know, you are anti-black for what you're doing here. We are trying to go on with our Black Lives Matter protest, and you refusing to move your truck is very anti-black of you, and it's very racist of you to do this. And he was refusing. They would just not admit to that fact that they are trying to stop a Black Lives Matter protest. They were looking for any other reason. Mm -hmm. Then they call. Then this white woman in a white this white woman pulls up and blocks the road even more towards where his property is, and she had called the police. She says that her reasoning for calling the police is because we littered. First of all, we did not. You were picking and Tati, up litter, I hear. Yep. Yeah. We pick up our trash. I'm going to say that. We pick up our trash. We Even if it's in your neighbor, trash can. trash, apparently. And yes. then, because of profanity is why because she called profanity. the police. Because of profanity. Because we were cussing because, because, because we're, because we're grown cussing. adults. She said, my kids are scared. Yeah. Okay. And they're so, teenagers. No, even past that. But that's a problem. That is a problem. your children are scared. It is a problem that your children are scared about some Black Lives Matter protests going on. That's right. And second of all, another point that I really want to stress is that is also a huge issue in this country where white people just call the cops on black people for, for no literally reason. no reason. Yeah. Nothing. And, and that escalates. ends in black people yeah. dying all literally. the time. You're calling the cops because somebody said a cuss word? Are you kidding me? You are risking our lives. Over a What's the word? cop going to do? Come and tell us, please be nicer. Like, that is not... That is unnecessary, and there is a reason why there should be. Yeah. There has been some laws that have been passed in certain states. I'm sorry, I don't know which states they are and what cities they are, where you can no longer just call the cops for no reason like that. And it's for the exact fact oh. that the cops are called on Sounds black like people. Seattle should be doing that too. Then That's now. what I'm saying. Yeah. The cops are just called on black people for no reason, and a lot of times this ends in the murder of an innocent black life. Seriously. So we continued to ask them to move the car. They refused. More of their neighbors started to come in and started to pull up. Not even like neighbors that live close by. Like people were driving Ow. from afar. They were Literally. calling people to come yeah. and defend them and pretty much attack us. So at that point, I was like, we need to get out of here. This is no longer safe for us. Because even though as this group of people, we are all so strong. But to go somewhere like that, we need to go with like... 50 times as many people that are here and we were unaware of that at the time but now we know better exactly where we were at and, and we hope I, you march with us when we go can back I, can i say something like i'm gonna be real like after that night it really showed me how much i dislike people like that it really showed me the true dislike i really have for people who act like that and people who condone acting like that so now, it's not hatred. It's not now, like hatred. It, no, it really. See, Straight I was trying to be nice, hatred. but it literally it's, is hatred. We don't want to have hate, it, hate, hate in our hearts, but I do have hate in my heart is. for but people like that. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes there's reason. I, I really, I'm not. Forget this being not. I really do have hatred in my heart right now for people like that. And it, and it literally, hold on. It literally showed me how much further we are as a city, as a state, as a country. Because until people like them are don't exist or they're so far in the closet you wouldn't know they exist, no, none of us are ever going to be safe. No black person is ever going to be safe. Ever. In this world with people like that. Ever. And I really am still baffled on why some of these council members are backing the, the chief of police when she is condoning racism, literally flat out condoning black woman or racism. Not, she black, is condoning black, black racism. Literally, she is condoning 
racism and saying that it is okay to be racist when people come to protest for black lives. She literally is condoning that and I'm just She's baffled like on why nobody guy. has spoke up and said nothing on this council. Because all you guys work for us, literally. The chief of police, all these officers. This morning. I don't know if you heard it. No, but yes, in, a, in the morning. Yeah, in the morning. Talking to her before but, like, this is like, this is disheartening. Like, literally so disheartening. Like, I literally have no faith in Seattle Police Department as a department at all. Now I'm at the point, bye, they can go. Take that, abolish their asses. Because that is not okay. And as long as she is chief of police, that behavior is going to keep being condoned. Literally. I just want to throw in a little fact that was um, just pointed out to me right now. So some people apparently spoke to the sheriff, um, and he said that the 911 board um, in that area that we were in lit, lit up. up when we arrived. And one of the calls said, if you don't get rid of them, we will. And the fact that the chief came out and was treating them was literally was awarding them. It was awarding successful. them. So that means that they are now thinking, oh yeah, if Black Lives Matter protesters come through, I better get my gun and wave it in their face. Because the chief said that's the good thing to do. That's the right thing to do. That's the patriotic thing to do. So in her position to say something like that and condone, not only condone that behavior, but encourage that behavior is not okay. It is not okay. It is also not okay that she lives out there and she's supposed to serve us here. Aren't you guys bound to live in the districts you guys work? Elected. 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 elected are. Okay. But she's not elected. Oh, well, there's just there's a way we can change that, though. Yeah. I'm sure there's a loophole that some lawyer knows. Y'all know some type of loophole. Because I did, I did, she when needs I was, when to I was, go. When I was looking last night for the um, post that Speck took down, I, was, I Googled Carmen Best Snohomish. And I found uh, an old article from 2017 when she was being put forward, when the community came back and you know said no, she should not be um, uh, uh, thrown aside and not considered for this position. Um, she said that her husband and her were going to move into Seattle <laughs> if she got the job. I mean, maybe. She well, has, clearly she lost. Maybe she, she lied. has. Maybe she has a residency. Either here. way, I mean, she's she not does living have multiple homes. Here. She does. But that is not her main home. Yeah. 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 Listen. Uh, I mean, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm really confused uh, paying attention to the news for the last three months about what's been going on in Snohomish, you know, with their sheriff um, um, uh, uh, being recalled because of him opposing the stay-at-home stay order of the governor and their police chief referring to the fact that in Snohomish, um, a bunch of protesters in June were met by a bunch of people in pickups and trucks, and the, their their police chief referred it as a festive atmosphere. <laughs> you know, I just, I don't understand how the chief can condone the actions of her neighbors, but, but I'm listening to people that I trust, uh, in addition to talking to you guys, and um, and I'm being asked to recognize her experiences as, as, as a black woman feeling threatened um, by protesters that um, are being, you know, compared to by, you know, venerated civil rights heroes, from my perspective, like Reverend Harriet Walden, as like the KKK. Yeah. <laughs> But they don't know who you are, and that's and that's, the, that's, that's, that's the your job to educate that I would them. like to to help. Gap. That's your job yeah. to educate them on who we so, are, because yes. you know who exactly who we are, and you know what we're about. Yeah, you're not a mob. You're not aggressive. So <laughs> all that we ask that you do is that you make sure because you you had conversations with conversations with us, you had Zoom meetings with us mm -hmm. while we're laying in our bed. Like, yep. let mm -hmm. them know like who we are. Regular um, schmegler people. Regular schmegler people, but I wanted to talk because uh, I know that we invited you to the Zoom call, but we didn't put you in there like today as a decision because we're coming to talk to you right now. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they're, they're only pushing 41% for, for defunding and they're saying that it's impossible to push for more even after us saying Okay, we'll take a loan. We can't do that. Okay, we'll fire well, we are any taking a loan. But taking a loan from where? We're from the next year's budget? Yeah. Interesting. And, they told us and we're going to pay it back from the cuts. So then why, why can't you do 50%? Back? 
when we mentioned that today to who are we talking to? Gonzalez, Gonzalez Peterson, uh-huh. and Peterson, um, and their team. They told us that they couldn't do that because that's money that's not there and it's not in hand money. So thanks for mentioning that because they obviously well, were transparent. The, the, abil- the ability to take a loan is not infinite. There's only a certain number. There, there are. There's 13 million dollars left in two of our emergency sub funds. So. Um, there are a couple different proposals out there. There's the proposal that um, myself, uh, Council Members Mosqueda, Council President Gonzalez, and Council Member Morales are behind. And there's Council Member Sawan's proposals. Council Member Sawan's proposal um, uh, does two things. It basically, in order to get to 50%, you have to fire the entire police department. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, cool. No, 1300 not cops. 700. Because, 1300. because we can't actually, between the period of time for layoff notices and the re- obligation to bargain, we're not actually going to be able to realize any money if we're successful until November. And she's figured it out so that it's 700, but our central staff, whether or not you agree with them or not, based on their understanding of how these timelines work, say it's not going to be those money is not going to be available if it's available until November and because it's that that leaves two months that will have to result in laying off the entire police department so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the conversation going and we're trying to give some concrete commitments because we're we're paying we're, we're making a down payment to the participatory budgeting process mm-hmm. We're, uh, we're paying into um, programs like Community Passageways and, and Choose 180 and other um, school-based programs um, to so that when we have that next conversation in six weeks, <laughs> right, mm-hmm. um, that, that we will have built up, um, we will have invested in and created the infrastructure so that we mm-hmm. can move more functions of the police department to non-policing alternatives. I have a question. So I know that um, they say it's not possible to move funds from different places and this and that, and we can't take funds from this and put it here. But however, I do know that that's not completely true because if I remember correctly, somebody did give me that information, I believe it was Ryan out here, that you guys did take money from the beverage tax money that you guys that Seattle's been taxing us for the past, what, year and a half, couple years now? Yeah. And I think it was about 500K that you guys took from there and put into early childhood That's education. Right. Yeah. So if you guys can move that like that, you could, Seattle makes a lot of money off that tax. I remember in a few months or a year or so, Seattle made at least $5 million off of that sugar tax. Mm-hmm. So if it's possible to take money out of that tax for early childhood education, which is great, I think you should have took more than 500K for that. Because children are the future and they deserve more than 500K. Right they should have got at least a few million. But if you guys can move money around like that for that, what's the problem with stopping you guys from moving the money around right now to add up to 50% mm-hmm. for the police? We just don't understand why it's so impossible to do that. So here's here's another um, um, barrier. Okay. Um, so you guys follow um, what some people call the Amazon tax? Yeah. We call yes. it Jumpstart. Mm-hmm. So um, we tax um, big business businesses that um, have more than seven million dollars of revenue, and we don't. We're not taxing the uh, pay of all of their employees. We're only taxing the pay of people making more than 150 million dollars a year. And then we made a plan for how we're going to spend those dollars in um, in 2020. And we're, we're borrowing from our emergency sub funds in order to pay for programs that we're not going to have revenue for mm. until next year. The mayor this week vetoed that plan. So yeah. another big barrier is we can, we can park money. That's why for the participatory budgeting process, the, the, um, the community-led uh, research project, we're not going to, we're research not going, we're, we're not going to, we're not going to, we're not going to put that money in the department's budget. We're going to put it in the legislative department's budget and we're going to contract with community-based organizations to give us advice on how to spend the next year's budget. The problem is, is, so the example that I just gave you, is we can move money around, we can't make the mayor spend it. Right, right. So we, we need can't? to take that power from home. We can't? 
Well, I think we can. can. I think we definitely <laughs> can. Because I don't know how to stress this enough because this is like really my my main thing. It's like, it's not even, forget us adults out here. It's not about us. It's about these black youth. They are the ones that are suffering currently right now because of this police department. Right. Right. They are the ones that are being victimized and brutalized the most yeah. by so, these police departments. So we have with this with this with this jumpstart uh, spending plan, we have eighty six million dollars that we want to spend in the next four and a half months for rent assistance, for food, for child care. Black birthing centers in these black communities. Let's spend it there because black women for small business, and we and the mayor has vetoed the spending plan for it. Eight, no, so she's saying, Amazon, she's saying she does not want to spend $86 million over the next four months. Well, we so well she's fine with spending how much tear gassing us in a couple so, weeks? So She's fine with spending $6 I, million dollars on overtime is, in 12 days? I'm just trying to uh, give the contours yeah, 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 of yeah. the powers of right, the legislative right, right. department. That's, and that's great. We can move the money around, but there's a bigger problem. We can move the money around. And, and I don't know why, I don't know why. How many more signatures do we need to recall her? <laughs> no, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. 56, I'm being, how many? 56,000. Well, we can get that in like two days, can't we, guys? Yeah. yeah. Can we get yes. 56 signatures, 56,000 yes, signatures in a couple yeah. days? Yeah. 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 What do we want for number five? Jenny Durkin to resign. Period. What like, are your uh, thoughts on Jenny Durkin resigning? Personally um, and politically. <laughs> you know, I think, I, you know if, if it gets on the ballot, I, you know, I support the, um, you know, the will of the people to make that decision. Yes. You know, she's up for re-election, though, and I just feel like... I have a feeling um, she's not getting re-elected. <laughs> I just have a feeling. You know, I feel like it's, uh, it's going to take a lot of, um, and I know there are differing opinions, and I respect everybody's opinion on this. But, and, you know, recalling the mayor might feel like a victory for the movement, but I just feel like it's going to drain a lot of our energy away from the things that we want to do. And I believe that you can hold our mayor accountable. Who's um, energy? No. Who, who's well, energy? I mean, I guess that's your call, right? I got the, <laughs> listen, I got the energy. Wait, because we're out here day. for five yeah. demand. Yeah. So, like, that, it, we have already been putting in that energy, yeah. so... Like, I got unlimited what's stamina. taking away from my energy is fucking derpy stopping us from doing <laughs> right? what we're out here to do. I'm sorry to go back to this, but uh, I wanted to let them talk first. Earlier, you were mentioning like taking a loan and only having a certain amount. So why can't you guys, that 9% mm -hmm. that you're not able to give us right now, why can't you take that out of next year's budget and say, I can't give it to you until then, but this is Take that per out. yeah well, this that's is basically taking what we're out. doing we're taking a loan and no but based you're not on the based on the based, based on the we're taking a loan now based on the promise that we're going to pay it back next year from cuts from the police department's budget so it's, it's going to be 50 percent shoot this for 50 percent because i'm hearing 41 percent mm -hmm. i don't want 41 percent i'm <laughs> saying shoot for 50 yeah. percent this year at let's least. take a loan for enough for 50 this year it, the city listen the beverage tax alone will pay that money back mm -hmm. let's be real because Seattle sells so much soda and candy and it's a sugar tax. So, um, so you we can only take it out have $13 million oh. left in our emergency loans, though. That's, that's what that's Federal what I'm loans, say. I'm just saying. <laughs> I hear so you. the city has, it, we have our own, there's there's two emergency funds. The rainy and day we fund. already, yeah, the rainy day fund and the emergency sub fund, I think is the other one. Um, we've already mostly depleted them for Jumpstart. The thing I just told you about, the $86 million to spend this year in the last four and a half months for rent assistance, child care, food support, um, and and small business support. So we've already taken 86 million of the, those two funds and there's only 13 million left and that's what we're using for defund. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes, that makes a little more sense. We're scrubbing the budget and we're getting our asses kicked for it because we have uh, the whole um, you know, sort of status quo bureaucracy saying, oh, you have to, you know, you have to save this money for a real emergency. And we're well, like, we're in a real emergency. I, I hope we all see the error in our ways for voting for that, that's the new contract they have now, because if that new contract wasn't in place, probably be a lot easier to cut their salaries yeah. right about now. Yeah. Because 
for officers to be making upwards of four hundred thousand dollars a year, what? nobody out here, including yourself, doesn't that's even crazy. make that. No, that's true. So for out of the highest, out of two hundred of the highest paid employees in Seattle, one hundred and nineteen of them are SPD officers. Wow. Out of two hundred of that's Seattle's wow. highest paid employees, a hundred and nineteen, one one nine, are SPD officers. That is ridiculous. Yeah. And so I, I hope we all see the error in our ways of voting on that new contract and increasing their budget annually by 2% every year. I hope we all see the error, especially you guys I, I on the see, council. I see, I see the error in my way. Especially you guys on the council. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do. I mean, like this, I, you guys I, again, created this mess sort of, we're in now. You know, yeah. literally. My life story, I don't know if you want to hear it, but, you know, as an organizer in low income communities, the, in, the, in the late 80s, you know the public enemy song 911 is a joke it is it, uh, yeah <laughs> but but the focus in low income communities was about getting adequate police resources and that's what i worked for i worked and i i raised the voices of um I, well i didn't raise their voices i brought people together and they raised their own voices to demand of city hall in places like syracuse and chicago and then here in Seattle to demand adequate public re public resources in policing. And I actually, I believe, because people believe, that they just needed their fair share of police resources. And they got and, their fair share and of now, police And now, I mean, I get it. I, I get it. We need to do policing a different way. And that doesn't mean throwing more money to buy more No, you need to scrap their asses and start and, and smooth the And grow the, the size over. of the police department. I, you know, I, I you know, I'm, I have had... Um, my own moment of revelation, and I, um, I regret not having a more open mind to doing things differently. What was your reason for revelation? Um, well, when people started calling for defunding police departments, I just started reading what everybody was writing about and what that meant, um, and um, it just started making a lot of sense to me that you know, even from, from the perspective of police, we've asked them to do too much and they don't have the competency to do a lot of the things that we've asked them to do. Um, and I think that's a, like, that's a, that's a, that's a point that can actually bring us together. Um, because, you know, cops don't want to be social workers. Cops, you know, don't want to, um, you know, I mean, I, I think that some of the police officers who do this work actually get value for them. But as a, as a reason why you become a cop, I don't think they they want to be an occupation in, uh, in schools and you know create that vibe in schools. There's a lot no, of things. We don't want them in our schools. No they're, more. That's right. why they're not and in our schools. And there's a lot of there's a lot That's of things we that we ask cops to do. They don't you know they don't they don't want to deal with the homeless problem. They don't want to deal with mental health issues. So give we them know. Yeah. Team yeah. And and so, so I think that's a that's, a that's a that's an area. I I don't know when and how we're going to get to it, but I want to try to get to that because I think that's an area of common ground. Um, that they can't actually, like, even if you believe, and I'm not saying that people do, um, that there is a legitimate law enforcement right. function, even if you do believe there's a leg legitimate law enforcement, there's no way in hell that they can do it, given everything that we've, um, we've asked them to do. Okay. So I want to ask other people to do that work. And I think they want us to ask other people to do that work too, but this is so, this is so much change. And, and, and it's, you know, it's, it's like, um, you know, there's this, this huge ship that's been going right. this one direction for a long time. And we're it's asking for it to course. like yeah. change course overnight. And I'm sorry that we're not doing it as quickly, but I'm, 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 I'm well, gonna be there. I, listen, I mean, we I, know this is not an overnight thing. This is gonna take as long as it's gonna take. And I'm here for every single second of it, no matter what, we are all here for every single second of it, no matter what. See, because we as a people have the right to stand up and say, you know what, this system that is basically incarcerating us, black people, we have the right to say that, hey, this system's not working for us. We need to find something better. And you guys as the city council and as our elected officials have the duty and the responsibility yes. to stand up and meet yes. the challenges of, of the I people. Agree. I agree. You guys really do. And this is the people telling you guys like, hey, this ain't working. And we need to figure out a better way sooner than later. Because later, yeah. so many more black people gonna die, and it's, 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 that's too yeah. late. Yeah. We need to yeah. figure this out now. Yeah. Because I will be damned if my little brother has to go, yeah. grow through life, and live through this racist system that we have yeah. now yeah. for the rest of his life. I'll be damned if that happens. Yeah. I promise you. Yeah. Like, 
Mm. I don't know what y'all got to figure out, but figure let, me look, look, let out. me look at the contracts. I'm sure I can figure it out <laughs> on how to get away and get around them things. Yeah. So let's 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 get let's pick that apart and let's figure that out because I prom I will be damned if my brother has to go through this racist system his whole life. Yeah. My nephews, my niece, I'll be damned if any of them have to go through this system for the rest of their life. So this is the people literally telling you guys what to do. Literally, we are telling you guys and we're asking you guys to not make excuses but find solutions yeah. that actually people the people can agree with yeah. because right now the solutions you guys are finding. I can't even agree with. I can never agree with them because it doesn't do nothing. It takes nothing away from them. It takes this much away from them. And they have this much. This much out of this well, much does nothing. For what it's worth, the fact that we are proposing to lay off, I mean, I, I get that this is not what you're asking for, but the fact that we're proposing to lay off 100 police officers um, is creating the kind of pushback right. Um, that we're all experiencing, right, right. it is definitely, I mean, this is a police department that um, believes, because it's been under the consent decree, that believes that reform is the path forward and will deliver justice. And it's, it's clearly not. <laughs> or, you know, the, right. the amount of money that we've, we spend on our reform efforts, if invested in different ways, might have might have had different outcomes over the last 10 years um it, but you you guys are you know i don't want you to underestimate even if you're disappointed in what we're doing how much you're shaking things up oh no we're well, not we know we don't we, no. we definitely know the we're not. we definitely know the, the the feathers were ruffling the trees were, were shaking <laughs> down the coconuts is falling we definitely see it yeah and and honestly i do we do see what you guys are doing, and we do. We hope that okay, it could be a hundred this for this week, whatever. But in six weeks, it should be more than a hundred. In six weeks, we should have fifty percent. Yeah. In six weeks. Well, you know the um, like. There's 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 things we can. I know there's listen. There's plenty of good lawyers out there that you can probably get to do the work for you. That can find a way around mm -hmm. that because. Spog. If you don't find a way now, Spog is gonna forever control how we try to tear down the police system because we're always gonna forever have to go around the Seattle Police Officers Guild. We are gonna forever have to tiptoe around them on ice mm -hmm. and on skates. Like, dang, if we make this move, stop being, it's okay to be scared. Like, there's something that we are all scared of, but be brave and face that shit head on. Yeah. You know what? Yes, Bog might come after us for taking 50% this year, but you know what? We're willing to brave that. Because if we're willing to brave COVID and come out here every single day and stand up and brave being harassed by these police officers and brave being beat by these police officers, you guys can brave a lawsuit. Dead ass. Like, dead ass, you guys can brave one little lawsuit. I get it might not be little, but you guys can take that risk because we've been taking the risk. I've been, I'm a walking risk my entire life. I've, the whole, I've been black for 27 years. I've been at risk my whole life. I've been at risk my whole life. Literally. So you guys can take the risk this one time and say, you know what? This is our, this is how we stand up for black communities. This is how we truly prove that black lives really matter to this council. We're gonna brave this. Yes, we know this might come with it. This is the rep, rep, uh, rep, repercussions, repercussions of this. But you know what? We're just gonna face this because this, this is us standing up for black lives and us proving the status quo wrong. Literally. Status quo is wrong. It is wrong. So prove that by, you know what? Let's brave this lawsuit. It is what it is. Because I'm, all, black, I'm all in and I'm not tripping. You guys are willing to risk more black people being harassed and killed? That's what you're saying is you're willing to risk that, but you're not willing to risk a lawsuit. That's exactly what you That's guys are saying. That's the message you guys are conveying to us right now. Literally. Well, um, we're not afraid of a lawsuit. We are going to get sued. We are trying to... We are, <laughs> we are, we are, oh, we we are trying to... Then shoot for 50% and stop giving us 41% well, bullshit. If you're going to go in, go one, in all the way. One yeah. lawsuit will win and the other lawsuit will lose. Oh, well. And the lo lawsuit will, that will lose will require us to hire everybody back and pay them back pay with money that we don't have in a crisis. 
You guys gotta fi- like. I'm so sorry, but you guys really gotta figure that out. You guys we created this. You that. guys literally well, created this I, mess we're I, in. I don't want to be a part yeah. of that process. I only want to be a part of this one. Y'all figure that out on your own because y'all <laughs> right. created that. Yeah. I got. I know some lawyers for y'all. I got some good lawyer connects for y'all. But like, dead serious. Like, you guys literally created hop- this I, system I, I, that I we are living. I talk to a lot of lawyers. I'm happy to talk to other lawyers. Like you guys have literally created this system that Seattle is living in right now, that black people in Seattle are living in right now. We're going to get sued. I'm trying to pick the lawsuit that we win and not bust another huge budget hole that we are in. Well, let's find a loophole in Spog's contract then, because I'm sure there's one. There's always a loophole everywhere. The police seem to always find one anyway, so let's find one for them. They find one for killing people. Just saying, they find a loophole every time they kill an unarmed black person and go on paid leave and go home and sit at home for that. So let's find a loophole to get their asses out of here. And as we are also fighting for that loophole, making sure as those six weeks are coming and they are coming fast. So it is imperative that contracts like Spog need to be taken down, that things need to be put in the forefront so this doesn't keep happening. Because when you city councils members are gone because if you aren't going to be doing your job when the mayor is gone what is going to be put in place so these same things don't keep happening and i just i also you know i want to um so the labor relations department and that's the department that is um under the mayor's office who actually initiates the conversations with Spog and schedules all the meetings are all under the mayor's department. We the council is not actually in the room negotiating the contract. Well, y'all and need so to be. I know, but well, you guys also talk room. to the mayor yeah. way more than we do. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, and, how many and people? And so I, I, I talked to the mayor on Sunday. Exactly. I talked to the mayor on Sunday, and bring I, I, I said I did. Good. I said we need to get on the same page here because there's one. There's a way that the chief can implement the council's budget vote as it relates to the to the to the layoffs that will help our case against Spog and there's a way that she could do it that will hurt our case against Spog. And you know Can you um, give us a meeting with the mayor? Yeah. <laughs> oh you yeah. said it you said it? Yeah. I'll take Everybody, that. and I mean all of us. Right. All of us. We want a meeting with the mayor. We want a meeting with the mayor. Yes. Yes, we want a meeting with the mayor for sure. Yes. In person, for yes. sure. That us. No yes. Zoom. By the end of no next week. That I will I will ask tomorrow. I can't I mean Yeah. I mean that's but, all you can do is yeah. if we, And I believe she'll say yes. Oh yeah, I'm Every, sure she will. I will. I'm I, shaking I can't her promise shaking that shit will. up like you said. But by the end of next week? Sure. I will tell her that your demands are <laughs> we can be joking. to resign. Well, to recall. To resign. Okay, it yeah. is, it is, it is recall, but you know, it's more catchy to say resign. I do not want her to resign because that puts us in a, a bad place. But um, we definitely want her gone. We want her back. I yeah, her I, I, I think the head better, head. the better talk for the purpose of the meeting. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> we are very We want to talk it. to her about her policies <laughs> and her politics, yeah. like everybody else. We just want to have a conversation and, like and, this. And, and what the what the city's labor position is going to be in negotiating the council's layoffs, right? Mm-hmm. Because there's, a, there's one way that the city could do it that are called impact bargain, and that means that SPOG can't question the decision made. And there's another way that it's done that then SPOG will be able to argue that legally the council wasn't even allowed to make the decision. And we want the mayor to support the way of doing layoffs that supports what's called impact bargain. That means that we can make the decision, we can get the money associated with the officer's salaries, we can spend the money to replenish the emergency fund, which that's what the mayor wants, and um, and we win the lawsuit. Mm-hmm. But if, if they do it the other way, it's actually gonna hurt the lawsuit, mm-hmm. and, and SPOG will be successful in arguing that the council was not even legal in voting to eliminate those positions. Okay, I think we can change the mirror. Well, I, th- I, think, I we, think so too. I think we, I think we have some pretty good resolve and some perseverance that lights fires underneath a lot of people's asses and changes their minds. I'm, yeah. we, I'm, t- I'm serious. Um, how about the how about the chief? Can I holding can her I, accountable? Can I help her? Can I help facilitate a meeting with the chief? 
Yes. 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 Definitely. Absolutely. I would like to do that. Outside though, we don't want to be gassed indoors nowhere. Outside, yeah. we can yeah. get In Seattle. Yeah, in Seattle. I want to yeah. be. I want to I mean, be on I the public street. I still want to have a conversation at her doorstep because that's what we've done to everybody else, and what makes her better as a police officer, as a police officer that just as like a police her. Chief. In- Exactly, yeah, police just chief. That not only is her income more, but she can't grace us with her presence of her house yeah. that we paid for. Yeah. No, we yeah, can yeah, have yeah, the meeting yeah. at her house. That yeah. we paid for. I will, I will make that request. Thank and you. And tell her, tell her racist neighbors to let us through. Because if we don't get it, shut it down. If we don't get it, shut it down. Thank y'all you so keep much for coming out here. Right. Y'all keep trying to point us out as these people that are being violent and crazy. But, not me. but, like, if we don't get it, it's shut it down. Y'all don't even know the half of it by any means <laughs> necessary. <laughs>